Hello, welcome back to my channel, Mel's Stampin' Gallery. I'm Melanie, your Close to My Heart Maker. And today, for your layout, I wanted to use this beautiful Cape Cod collection in the July-August 2023 seasonal catalog. And I think we can all agree that we have some sort of beach, lake, pool pictures that would be absolutely perfect for the papers and stickers and embellishments in this collection. And I wanted to use this collection for these photos of a recent uh, trip we took actually a couple years ago to Hilton Head. Um, and I really wanted to showcase these photos. So it went really well with the colors in the Cape Cod collection. However, I wanted to add a few um, different colors to kind of emphasize her little bathing suit. And in this picture, she has on this little pink hat. And if you look at the sand, it really is more of a mink color. And if we look at the colors for the Cape Cod collection, it says Periwinkle, Bluebird, Lagoon, and Toffee. So let's look at those. So first off, I myself don't have any periwinkle, but I, it does have, and this comes from the um, scrapbooking workshop. So it did have this piece of this um, kind of textured periwinkle paper. And the Cape Cod collection also comes with this wood grain. And the back side is that palm frond. So I'm liking that wood grain. I can bring in the periwinkle and this sheet with the anchors and the seagulls and the fence posts and things that's all periwinkle and you see a lot of that in the stickers okay so what i wanted to do <clears throat> as i was looking at these photos i noticed the periwinkle does look nice with the clouds kind of has that same color as the clouds so that looks good but if i wanted to bring in some more of those more vivid colors bring out those picture um, colors from the picture here we've got our bluebird which is one of the colors lagoon which that works well and the toffee and that works well with my pictures too but as i was looking through my stash i saw capri and that was absolutely perfect to go with her little bathing suit that was perfect and then I saw the mink color, and that I thought was perfect to go with the sand on the beach. So I decided to bring, I'm going to bring some of that in somehow. And then, look at this raspberry. Look how nice it matches her little hat. So to bring in a little pop of a little bit of extra color, I thought maybe we'd be able to bring in some of that raspberry and I do have this from another collection. And this is the zip strip off of one of the papers from the Cape Cod collection. Some of the other embellishments from the Cape Cod workshop. But I went back into our SVGs and I found these cute little popsicles. So I cut those with the Lagoon and the Raspberry because if you notice in this one picture, where is it? Here it is. Uh, the two little girls. That's my granddaughter and that's her cousin. They are eating popsicles, excuse me, popsicles. So that was perfect to go with that. And then I was able to find on Cricut a little hat. And using the raspberry to cut out the hat, I thought that would make a perfect embellishment to match the hat in that picture. And as I was looking through my stash, so here are the cardstock colors that I was talking about. We've got the mink, and the Lagoon, and the Bluebird, and the Capri. And then I also have this stencil um, that I really want to use with the waves on it. And there's a sun and there's seashells. So somehow I want to incorporate this into the layout as well. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this off. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started because I just really don't know where we're going to end up. But stick around. So I've got these things on my desk because I decided to try to do some mixed media. And remember I said I wanted to bring in the stencil 
for the wave. Um, the Cape Cod collection just kind of spoke mixed media to me. So I wanted to try to do some of that. And I already practiced on the one sheet. And this is going to be a double page layout. So I've got my first sheet done. So I thought I'd show you how I did all these pieces. And I've got this mink cardstock that I'm going to use for the sand down there. And I've got the wave stencil and some splattering and smushing and uh, texture paste. So I'm going to clear this off. I'm going to show you how uh, the steps I went through to get this look. I've got some of the materials that I need and I'm going to start with the uh, Distress Oxide Weathered Wood to get this dark color. And that went well on the mink cardstock. So I've got the dark side of the mink here. And all I did to start was take my blending brush and I'm just creating that darker shadow down here on the bottom with the Distress Oxide. And I'm just going circular motions and there's no rhyme or reason to it, but I just keep adding more ink to get it as dark as I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and then I'll be right back. Now that I've got that um, inked up the way I want it, the cool thing about the Distress Oxide is they are water reactive. So if you want like the little water droplets, if I just drop water on there, it will react and it will lighten up. And you can see it kind of starting to happen already. I got that a little big, but that's all right. And then you can also take it with your paintbrush and just flick the little water drops on there too. Then to give it a little shimmer, I've got these pearlescent um, paints that I actually got them at Hobby Lobby, um, but you can get them on Amazon. I just looked, so I will link that for you down below as well. But I've got my water brush and I'm picking up the um, this pearlescent white over here and I'm just loading up my brush with the water and getting the paint, picking up the paint, and then I can just splatter that on the page with my water brush, like so. And of course, the more paint I get on there, uh, the more splatters you'll get, obviously. And let me do one more for you. There's a good one. And I'm just tapping actually pretty hard so I can get a lot of that splatter on there. And I like to change hands so it goes in both directions. All right, let me hold that up for you and see if you can see that shine. Can you see that shine? Oh, my camera gets in the way. But can you see that shine? A little bit. I don't know. Okay, so that looks good. And then I wanted to add some more of a deeper white color splatter. So I've actually got just some, actually it's acrylic titanium white um, paint. I think I got that probably at, probably Joann's or Michael's. And again, just putting a little bit in my dish, putting some water in it, and again, flicking. And then we've got some of that white some more white splatters on our page. Okay. Now to do this torn kind of organic edge to make it mimic the waves, um, I could just tear, but I do want it to be kind of controlled. So I find it's easy to kind of take your water brush and draw a line where you want to tear your paper. And then if you tear it toward you, it should tear easily along that water line. And then you'll get the shape you want. It's still organic looking. <laughs> and 
I'm going to fix that up because I got some really big water spots there. And to give it that roughed up edge, because it's wet, you can really roll it up very easily and play with it till you get it as uh, uh, rolled up and rough as you want. But you see how that white paper in the center is making, it's mimicking the white uh, waves crashing on the shore there. So I like how that's looking. You just wrap that up, get it the way you want it. Make your finger. Okay. And then you'll set that aside to let it dry. Okay, now let's uh, rec recreate <laughs> the wave and splatter. Um, portion on the bottom of the page. So let's move that aside and I want to start with my piece of White Daisy 12 by 12 cardstock and I should mention I do have an all-purpose mat down underneath to protect my surface anytime I am doing a mixed media. Alright so I'm going to start with the Lagoon ink and I think what I want to do is smoosh it on here and pick it up from there and start off the paper because I don't want it to be too dark and I'm just doing like I did with the um, the mist ink and I just want to put a light coating on here and so I'm picking it up and just gently moving to the top. Okay, so let's fill that in. And smoosh that around. Work it in. Then when I get my stencil taped down, I've got it taped down to the all-purpose mat so it doesn't move around. And then I also have um, the stencil itself taped down to the all-purpose mat with some pink low-tack tape. And I did it around the top and the sides too, so I don't get any of that extra um, spillover from the stenciling. So I've got the Broken China, which was almost a perfect match for that Capri color. So I've got the Broken China in the Distress Oxides. And I'm just picking that up and again with that circular motion going around and around. Um, the stencil like so now I've moved the stencil over to do the next portion and I actually flipped it over so it's kind of so it would line up better um, where the two pieces are going to meet up and again we're just going back and forth and I'm kind of doing a back and forth motion because, whoops, see, <laughs> if you're not careful, that will happen. Okay, so let's get this all finished up. And I'll do the remaining portion on the end. And then we'll see how it now all for the splatters. I'm going to take my weathered wood and smush some on my all-purpose mat. And I've got a big wide brush and a jar of water. I'm going to get a big puddle here and I'm going to make some big splatters around my page. And to get the Capri color, let's take the Broken China <coughs> and smush it on our all-purpose mat. And again, let's get a paintbrush. I've got a smaller one this time. And dip it in the water make a puddle a little bit more water and then you can do the same thing and just tap and get your splatters where you want them you want some more down here under the waves so let's splatter some around here and all around the page like so Now that we've got our base pages made, let's start putting uh, the layout together. All right, so what I did was I took a piece of pattern paper from the Cape Cod collection and I've just torn it at an angle 
and I'm going to put that down at the bottom. With some adhesive, of course. Let's put that at the bottom, line that up, and then that gray mist piece that we created is going to go over top of that, of this piece. And I just want this piece poking out from this just a little bit like that. Now let's try to fiddle around with the pictures and any more paper that we might want to put on pattern paper. So what I've been thinking is these two pictures on this page kind of at an angle. And then I've got these torn leftover pieces from down here and also from the uh, Cape Cod pattern paper because I want to bring in some of that uh, bluebird color. So I just tore this, um, just tore it very simply, no rhyme or reason. Uh, it was just a very organic tear. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put that up there and that brings some of that color from the pictures, brings it up here. And then I think I've got this piece that I used for the waves down below. And I think if I put that like that, that kind of mimics what's down here and brings that up there, makes your eye travel up that way. So I think that'll work. Let's put it with the second page and see if we can do something similar. So we've got the same zip strip here from the pattern paper. Then we've got the stripe. Let's put that there. And I've got this tiny little piece left over. I think I'm going to be able to kind of stick it in and make it hang out like that. And then the pictures on that page, let me find them. I think I'm going to go something like this. Let's put the 4 by 6 here. Let's put the this one there and this one down here. Something like that, maybe, is what I'm thinking. I've got the uh, all the pattern papers adhered and I've got my pictures adhered. And I've gone ahead and I've made this embellishment cluster down here in the corner with that hat that I showed you at the beginning from the Cricut. Now I want to go ahead and let's work on this page. And I want to work on the title and embellishments. So I've already got something started here. And actually yesterday, while I was working on this, I actually got a delivery from close to my heart, which I was waiting for. And in that delivery was the Cape Cod scrapbooking stamp set, which um, I want to use for the title. And what I did was the You Can Find Me is part of this set. You see it here, and that has a thin cut, so I've stamped that in the dark blue color and cut that out. For these, okay, the little seashells with the glitter. Those were made with the Stampin' Thin Cuts Cape Cod card making workshop. And this comes with these stamps and then it also comes with the thin cuts. And so I just stamp, or cut those out of toffee and sponge the edges in the toffee color as well and then just um, used my stickles moon dust, uh, what do they call that? Glitter gel. Moon dust stickles, moon dust glitter gel, and put that on the seashells. And now I want to tuck these in behind the picture. So I'm gonna use my Tombow liquid adhesive. I usually like to use that when I'm tucking embellishments in and sliding them around because it gives me wiggle room. All right, so that's gonna go like that. Let's put this little seashell right over here. Again, with our Tombow liquid adhesive. And that's gonna go right about like that. 
So this makes a little cluster up here. And actually for this banner, I think I'm going to put it on some foam tape. And the other fun thing I got in my order yesterday, finally, was my micro tip scissors. Yay! And I can cut the foam tape and the adhesive won't stick. Actually, I think I'm going to cut that in two and put one on each end. Look how nice that cuts and the adhesive doesn't stick to my scissors. I love it. All right, so that one's going there and that one's going there and then that will get popped up right on top of there. Now down here at the bottom for the title then, okay, so you've got the You Can Find Me and then they've got this one that says Plain in the Sand, but I wanted to make that two-tone. Okay, like that, but I didn't want it on a circle. So I'm gonna to try to make it into a banner, but let me show you how I did the two-tone stamping. And to do this, it's helpful to have a misty or some sort of stamp positioner. So I've got my square in the corner where I want it. I've got my stamp on the door where I want it. And I wanna take, first I'm gonna start with my toffee and I'm just going to very carefully try to ink up just the word sand. But if I get it up on the other word, that's okay. Because what I'm going to do is take my stamp chamois here and just go along those words and make sure I have all that off of there. It says uh, all the toffee off the word plain. Then when I go to close my door, and press down. I've got the word sand stamped in toffee. Now I can do the same thing then with the word plain in the with my dark blue color. I did not get a good impression on there, did I? So I have to try that again, but that's the good thing about the misty. Okay, now I've got the uh, words plain in the inked up in my dark blue color. And again, I'm gonna take my stamp chamois and wipe them off where I got it on the bottom where it says sand. So let's get that cleaned off and wipe that off. And then we close our misty doors. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do this on camera. Okay, so let's close our door and press down. And I like to take the cloth and kind of rub on it. And there we go. We've got the two-tone color. All right, so this is stamped, and I've got a banner little flag shape cut out of it. And I wanted to put it right there. And I thought, well, I could sponge up the edges. But I think, let's bring some of that periwinkle down here. So let's mat this. And we've got periwinkle over here on this circle as well. And those circles come from the scrapbooking workshop kit. And also in that scrapbooking workshop kit is this periwinkle textured looking paper. So I thought I'd use that for to mat the uh, banner. But I think I want to sponge this up first. Alright, so I was going to sponge the edges of that uh, white daisy piece, but <laughs> it was already stuck to the um, pattern paper, so I decided just to go with it, and this time just add some stitching lines, and I just did that by taking my Le Pen and just drawing some just quick little dashes all around the edge, and I'm going to I've slide. got some more of these uh, paperboard embellishments from the Cape Cod collection. I think I like that there. And then I've got the seahorse from that stamp collection that I uh, stamped in that raspberry ink to be bringing that all around. And remember the popsicle? <laughs> so let's play with this a little bit. The popsicle's gonna go kinda like that. Let's put some of this coral in here. Okay, whoops. I'm gonna fiddle with that a little bit more, but this is just the general idea. The seahorse and the popsicle. 
kind of like that maybe and then I've got these glass board these little acrylic shapes that they actually look like sea glass and I think I might put that one right there I went ahead and got everything adhered down and I fiddled with and played with the embellishments and that's kind of my favorite part of doing all this but I've got this embellishment cluster here like I said with the um, stamped and uh, die cut images the popsicle and the um, die cut image of the shells that came from that card making set and then we've got our little cluster up here and if I show you then the right hand page it's kind of hard to see the whole thing together in one frame but there you have it so here's the right hand page let me show you what I did here I think I showed you this cluster down here before I just added a couple little stickers and things here and then of course we've got this embellishment cluster up here with again the popsicle and the coral piece from that scrapbooking stamp set and the seahorse and those glass well, I keep saying glass because they look like sea glass um, I wish you could see that in person. They really look pretty cool. Uh, then I've got my journaling and I just type that up and I open up a text box in, um, what's it called, notes, I think, on my iPad, type up what I want to say, and I printed this one off on a clear label and just ran it through my printer like normal and put it on the layout. Another one thing, the one tip I have about printing them out on um, the labels, the clear labels, when it comes out, it is still kind of wet to the touch. And I found if I pounce with my anti-static uh, pouch, it um, absorbs that uh, ink and it dries it up and I can um, almost immediately adhere it to my layout. And down here we have some of those little strips from the sticker sheet that I've added here and here and down here, and just in a few little places. So there you have it. What do you think? Um, if you like what you see, go ahead and give this layout a thumbs up if you would please. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite beach to go to. And be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a video and I do try to do it once a week it's been a while things have happened here that have been kind of crazy but um, yeah I do try to upload once a week so go ahead and hit that notification bell if you would please so that's it for today be sure to check out the description box down below for links to all the products that are available that I used in this layout today so that's all for me today guys